This is an oral history interview conducted for the Witness to War Serving a Nation Project at Nauset Regional High School on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. For the sake of this interview, please state your full name and community in which you now reside. My full name is John Brewster Hopkins, and I reside in Truro. Truro. Where were you born and raised? Where was I born? I was uh, born in Nantucket. Um, in 1948, and I've lived in a real lot of places since that um, time. Wow. Um, who did you grow up with? Who did I grow up with? Ooh, who did I grow up with? Wow. That's a difficult question. I grew up with lots of kids from all over the place, and it seems like it changed all every couple of years. It was like a new batch of kids. So. I had to uh, hold, always hold my own wherever I went. And um, what made you decide to join the Army? The Army was um, uh, not really a choice. I had um, some difficulties with the local police department and, uh, you know, driving and drinking and getting in trouble. and. They basically told me to leave town and not to come back. And so I didn't have too many places I could go. So um, I went and uh, enlisted in the United States Army. Oh, and um, how old were you when you went through basic training? Basic training, I think I started when I was 17 and finished up when I was 18. And um, did you know anyone who decided to join the Army? No, I didn't know anybody. I don't think I knew anybody that had actually decided to join. And uh, it was just my way out of town. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have a two brothers and a sister. And you, did you have anybody that you looked up to? Ooh, ooh. That's a tough question. At that time, probably not. Probably not. I was pretty uh, rebellious. Um, when did you go to Vietnam? In 1968, in May of 1968, on Mother's Day. And how old were you in 1968? Um, I was 18 then. And how long did you serve in Vietnam? Uh, just to, you go, for, they sent me over there for a year. It was okay. probably a year to the day, I think. And when, when you first got to Vietnam, what was the first thing you noticed? Uh, people were shooting at you. <laughs> I think that's the first thing I noticed. Yeah, there was, um, I was definitely aware that that was the case. And when you, was there anything in Vietnam that was like memorable, like maybe a landmark or a funny memory with you and your... Yeah, the whole thing was memorable. Um, uh, what was memorable was how easy you get used to it. I would say that's how easy you get used to it from being... Hey, 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 do you know what? Do you know what? This is in the middle of something. Go, go lay down. Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lula. <laughs> so what, what was the last question? I forgot. Memorable. Memorable. Oh, I don't know. I just, I think it was just, like I said, just how quickly, like, a really bizarre world becomes normal just like things that you would not think were normal at all, all of a sudden they're just totally normal. And um, so every day was totally the same as the n last one, except it was a new one and um, something exciting might happen, might not. Did you have any friends that you were serving with? Um, no, I was just in a unit with you know, a bunch of other guys from all over the country, and 
um, we were friends, you know, we got to be friends, but um, not before going there. I had some friends come visit me, and um, I went to try to visit my brother-in-law over there, because I knew people that were close by, but um, no, that wasn't how the, the Army did it. So. And did you have any stories with those guys? Like, did you create stories or like? Stories, create them? stories. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a like a a um, a movie. And you're in the movie, but you're not really in the movie. You're kind of just watching the movie. So lots of things happened, and they really wouldn't, you know, affect you. Um, something could be um, life-threatening, and it would just feel like, oh, that, that was just that. It was just what happened, you know. You wouldn't get, like, I wouldn't get, like, crazy over it just be whatever, whatever it was, you know, somebody shooting at you or the, losing an engine in a plane or whatever it was, those kinds of things. Where did you go in Vietnam during the time you were serving? Um, I only went, I went all over the place in a little, um, little twin engine plane. But mostly, I was only in a, went like one base camp, and then we flew out of there and just flew all over the place. Okay. Um, what was it like for you when you returned to America? Um, it was very difficult to come back to this country because. Uh, you know, nobody here was at war, so it was like coming back to everybody's lives are just going on, and they're just la la and along, and um, it was very difficult to take that, that, you know, when you're in the, like, you go from a war and they take you home and they plunk you out in the middle of, middle of society, hey, Lula, Lula, come on, it's <laughs> literally a crazy dog. You're just like all, you're just all bad, you're just so bad. And um, so I remember taking my uniform on and off in the airport so that nobody would know that I was a soldier. And so it felt like that, it just felt like that because it, it had been, it's been all fucked up, you know, it's all fucked up over there. It just was. You know, we were. Killing, killing a lot of people, and um, my my job was to hunt people and to find people. And if I found people, then um, a lot of uh, you know B fifty twos would attack attack those people. <laughs> Lula, Lula, just such a crazy dog. Stop, stop. Hey, come here. All right, I'm right here. I'm right here. So I, by that by that point of coming back, I just wanted to disappear, you know, not be anybody, just sort of hide. Um, and time. back to when you were in Vietnam, what did you, what was your main job? I know you my said main job was to go fly in a. Uh, OV-1 Mohawk with a pilot, and we would go out every day and um, look for signs of people in the woods, you know, through a, like an area like this. Probably about as big as all of Cape Cod. So all the, that's what we just did every day. We just went looking for, because they, they had driven the people out of the countryside and into the cities. So if you were outside in the in the woods or you know where your farm was, you were considered um, an enemy, whether you were or not. And so 
Well, we just, that's what we did. We went looking for people. And can you describe like the feeling of flying in like a plane and looking for people? Uh, that's a really weird one. Um, it's kind of really, really um, wicked powerful because if you um, find somebody, you're probably going to kill them. I mean, the, the, the amount of firepower that they would bring in is pretty impressive. So the likelihood of you living through me seeing you was not very high. And um, so after a while, it, it wears on you, you know, when you flip. You see people, you see them in a boat on a river or, you know, just like, sometimes you knew they were soldiers because they would they would be moving fast and they would have that look about them but sometimes it was just people and um, that's really wearing you know to do that because uh, it just is I don't know how to put it any other way and um, while I was there I read a book that some church group had put in a box and it was called the history of Vietnam so somewhere in the middle of my tour, I read about the history of Vietnam and how they had fought the French and they fought the Japanese and they, now they were fighting the U.S. And it was like, whoa. So it was an eye-opener to be faced with that knowledge and to sort of have to still do your job. Um, when you first got back, did you have any obstacles or anything you had to overcome? Or? Um, yeah, it took me a long time to overcome, um, well, maybe I haven't even overcome it, guilt, just, just a general sense of guilt. And by serving in Vietnam, did it give you a different look on the world? Oh yeah, <laughs> it really did. It gave me a totally different look. Um, I was an 18 year old kid, no political sense at all, no sense of the world, just you know, wanting to party and, and run around and be crazy. And uh, after going there, I realized that uh, United States government can be pretty vicious out in the world. And you don't really see it here, but you see it on the other end in these in these countries like Vietnam or mm -hmm. Libya or Iraq or wherever it is. <clears throat> and there's some people who make serious money at that business. And that's their business. And so then they get dumb seventeen, eighteen year olds maybe even up into their 20s to go do it under the guise of you know, wonderful U.S. and mm -hmm. glory to the <laughs> soldiers. Uh, are you great? When you first enlisted in the Army, what did you, what were you expecting? Like, what did you expect? When I first enlisted, um, I had no clue, but the first day in the Army I knew I had made a big ass mistake, as I knew the very first day that I had 1,095 more days to go. I counted them, because I knew I just had screwed up, and this was not going to be very much fun. And, uh, it didn't turn out to be that much fun, but I did get through it. Got through it. Hey. What did you do when you like returned? Did you like? Um, well, I got uh, I got into um, politics and 
protesting and um, try to keep my mental state together pretty much with a bunch of other Vietnam vets who, you know, I don't know, they probably went to jail three, four, five times. Just trying to get the soldiers who were there back out. But I spent a lot of time, I spent ten, maybe ten years doing that. <laughs> did you start anything when you got back? Like, did you start working or? Well, yeah, I went to work, but I had to go to work because um, I went to work in construction because I didn't think I could fit into any other like corporate or business kind of thing. So I just started being a carpenter. And they didn't have um, they didn't have drug tests, you know, because I had a fairly good sized drug and alcohol problem. So I didn't think I would fit into a professional world very easily. I just went to work as a carpenter, and that's what I've been doing for uh, 40 years, I think, something like that. When you first started, had you had any, ex any experience with building? A little tiny bit, just working for a friend of mine's father. Uh, yeah? What's it like now? What's it like now? What's it like now? Um, mm. I uh, am still quite severely bothered by um, Vietnam. I'm really kind of very anxious that there's going to be a big war. And uh, oh, I don't know, but I'm, I'm some ways I'm at peace with it. You know, it's just that this was such a long time ago. What else? What can I do? I can't undo it. Thank you for doing this. Oh, uh, my pleasure. And thank you for your service. Uh, thank you.